Well, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim, Seven Spot Jim, and I'm calling from uh, Palatial uh, Seven Spot Studios in downtown Vancouver. Well, South Surrey, really. Um, it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon, 21 degrees outside, and it's a beautiful day for a virtual and socially distant sevens interview. And on the other end of the line, I reckon I'm speaking to somebody in New Zealand. Who's on the other end of the line there? Hey, Jim, how's it going? It's great. It's, uh, it's Brian. Hi, Brian. Yeah, How are you right. doing? We are in New Zealand. So I, I was at, what time is it there in New Zealand? Uh, 10 o'clock, actually, 10 in the morning. I've got a dumb question for you. Is yep. it is it a tea breakfast or is it a coffee breakfast? Um, actually, I don't drink hot drinks. Oh, you don't? I drink water. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I guess it was a water breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Water and uh, plain white toast. Cool. I Listen. have a very limited palate, I'm afraid. Uh, no worries. I, I my, You don't want to hear about mine. It's just like I eat a lot of grass. So anyway, um, here's where we're at. I understand that's legal now in Canada. <laughs> so what I've written up on 7 Spot about you is you've got two chevrons. That's a bit of an anomaly. Can you tell us a bit about that, how that came to be? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm going to switch over to uh, full screen. People can see your mug and the whole thing, and then you can tell oh, us no. all about the car. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll flip you over to the cars now anyway. Perfect. Because let, let's face it, they're a whole lot prettier than my old mug. So this, the one we're looking at at the moment, uh, my Lucky Strike one, mm -hmm. is the first one I bought. And I'd been after a seven-type car, uh, for the best part of 30 years, but motorcycles, time, family and money meant that it was never going to happen. Yeah. Obviously, things change in the future, and I ended up buying this one about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was uh, what I considered quite an ugly blue. The paint was flaking. It, it had run into a lot of disrepair, mm -hmm. but it had a heart of gold. And you couldn't go past the fact that it was running a 3.8 litre V6 in it. Oh, okay. Um, which isn't too bad for something that's touching on 700 kgs. Mm -hmm. uh, so last Christmas, I finally bit the bullet and uh, did it up. So stripped it right back, uh, painted it, ordered in the sticker kit. As you can see, it's, um, we go down to here. It's Team Chevron Lucky Strike, which obviously that was never a thing, but the guys uh, did the decal kit for me up in England and sent it down, and it it's um, it really suited the car, especially oh, the white. Great. I must say, it looked, I mean, it's a sharp-looking car. And, you know, you've um, got rid of the big windscreen, which had all the aerodynamics of a Volvo or block of flats, whichever one's your preference. Uh, yeah. Got the little Brooklyns in there. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done anything with the interior, but it's only where you sit. So uh, change the roll bar. Like I do follow a lot of the um, sevens up in Japan. Yep. And I love the way the Japanese do their um, sevens. No, I agree. I, uh, I, I recognize it's, it's the roll bar. Uh, I guess you'd say in. Yeah, that, that they really like to go traditional, fast yeah. traditional, I guess you'd say. And um, so that that was the Lucky Strike one. Uh, obviously, the wheels are BMW wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I picked them, because I like the look of those, uh, the big wheels. Oh, hello. We've got <laughs> a, uh, a visitor just making sure we're doing it right. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... Uh, choosing the BMW ones, I know that they're meant for a 7 Series Beamer, so I know that they're good. They're uh, a factory wheel, they're strong, they're always, they're, they're just no problems with them. You can buy a lot of aftermarket wheels down here in New Zealand, which are Chinese made, mm -hmm. and you do get a lot of problems with them, unfortunately. 
Um, but yeah, I, I tried to do as much on the car as possible. So, I mean, if we look at the, the shrouding for the, the exhaust, I made all that out of flat sheet. It does look good, kind of breaking up a bit. Maybe you could just step back a bit to where you were because the, the um, feed was a little bit better. The year and... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yep. Um, and then we go on to my little black one. So, yeah, yeah. that one's more for show and sort of racing. Mm -hmm. So I can take that to a car show and people like it and it looks all pretty and good. Can I, can I jump uh, in for just a sec? Because I know yep, that yeah, go for one it. of the things I, I was um, noting in, in, you know, following you on YouTube and, and as I noted that, that you had um, a, set, a special plan set out uh, for a bit of a road trip. And is that what the, uh, the, the black one is for? Actually, yeah, you did right. It is. So this one I'm building to um, do touring. Wonderful. So it's a super light little car. She's mm -hmm. just under 500 kgs. Mm -hmm. And with the little um, 5k motor in it mm -hmm. and manual gearbox, it's predominantly been built uh, just to cruise at 100k and not actually go too hard out on it. Yeah. Got it. Um, so ev everything that we're building into this is with the view that it's going to end up doing lots of Ks. So the, the one we were talking about um, the other day on YouTube is a thing called the Fraser 5000. Mm -hmm. So I'll be starting here in Auckland, which is near the middle of the North Island, just above the middle of the North Island. Yeah. And um, New Zealand has such imaginative names for its islands. North Island, South Island. <laughs> yes. They're just so imaginative. Um, and we're heading up to Kiri Kiri, uh -huh. uh, which is near the top of the North Island. And uh, from there, we'll travel down the East Coast to the bottom of the South Island, which is in Vicargo, and then come back up the West Coast, uh, back up to the North Island. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get to Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand, I'm going to break off from the touring group, and I've got a a big event to go to um, and that's called the beach hop which is something we try and do and get together with a whole lot of friends mm -hmm. but um, yeah so this car is made going to be made for touring I, I hope to end up doing a lot of k's in it well, it, it 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 looks like a charmer I mean it, it, it truly is when when does um, the Fraser start ah yeah so the Fraser 5000 for me starts on the 14th of November okay. and runs through to the 28th of November. So you're not going to be in a blind panic to get the engine in there and, and all the rest of it? Um, yes and no. What I do want to do is uh, get the heart in the hole and get it all up and running because mm -hmm. um, it's still got to have a full rewire in it. Um, got to put uh, a pants on it uh, the, the body belly pan yeah and all the all that sort of carry on mm -hmm. uh, plus a pulse to the seats and i want about a month of testing yeah uh, just just to do a shake down make sure that everything is running as it should do mm -hmm. and but you know for me these cars they don't represent a lot of money yeah um I've really gone out of my way to do this on the cheap. Ooh, pardon me. The paint job on the white one, I think, cost me six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. To buy the car itself was about five thousand. So all up, as that car sits, uh, the mags I bought, mags and tyres for eighty dollars, because no one wants secondhand BMW mags. <laughs> uh, all up, that car represents about seven thousand dollars. Um, so in American dollars, that works out to be roughly about 4000 Oh, my. And that's it. Uh, the little black one here, she represents even less. So I bought the car for $2,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to put in another three. 
Mm-hmm. So all up, she'll be worth to me about five thousand. So once again, you're only looking at about three and a half thousand dollars US. Wow, that's cool. There's one thing I noticed um, in your other videos on, on your YouTube channel, uh, which I will link, by the way, um, uh, to um, Seven Spots so people can go and like and subscribe because uh, it's an interesting story you're telling. Uh, I'd like to uh, you to tell a story about your LED whip that you've got there. Oh, yeah. So um, with that, because... The color scheme for the little black car is going to be satin black and with an orange stripe over it. So very much Harley Davidson colors. Yes. The idea of being in a little satin black car on a black bitumen road in the middle of the night, you're just not going to be seen. And it's my big fear that I'm going to be run over by a soccer mom or someone (laughs) in an SUV. Yeah. Which probably are mostly soccer mums and SUVs anyway, but I digress. I wanted to look at something that made me more visible. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to paint the car a day glow orange or yellow, Mm because that's just not me. And I was looking on some videos on YouTube, and I saw these uh, dune buggies in uh, Glamis, uh, Mm -hmm. up in California there. And they all had these lit up LED whip aerials. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? A a big day glow green whip aerial Mm -hmm. is going to make me be seen. And you can make the darn thing strobe. And (laughs) you've got lots of options. Everything. (laughs) Yeah. And it it actually doesn't look, get my arm in there, they bend quite well. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't look overly ridiculous sitting on there. Yeah, no, and no they're worries. very easy. So, if you take out uh, the pin there, mm-hmm. the whole thing just pops off, and you can store it away. Perfect. You're a thinking man, Brian. <laughs> I try to. Yeah. So yeah, oh. with the um, we'll probably put Brooklyn's on the front of this as well. Nice. Because for the for me, the objective is that because um, I'm ex motorcyclist. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously the the family with the family coming along, it, to me it seemed pretty irresponsible to be enjoying myself on a motorbike where I could get killed. Mm-hmm. And a bit of background on that is quite a lot of my um, very close friends have died on motorcycles, so it it wasn't as silly as it sounded. Uh, yeah. I wanted to have that feeling again of being free, free to ride or drive. And these cars, these sevens, they're the closest thing I've found to be able to just get out and enjoy what is, you know, what is really a beautiful country to see, especially in the summer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and the fact is, I mean, you may not be on two wheels around four, but you do drive it like you're on a bike. Yes, yeah, well, and, that, and as you know, some of them out there have got motorbike engines in them. Uh, mine does. I know. <laughs> What's it, a Hayabusa, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. 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 Big motor. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's quick. But, yeah, so th- these ones, um, speed's not really the, the big driving fra- factor for this little one, uh, for my black one. Um, and no. ultimately, what would be really cool is the ability to, because it's so low, yeah. you're talking 26 inches to where the roll cage starts. So I can box it up and under 500 kgs, mm-hmm. box it up, send it to a country because it's such a small package. It's not considered like car. Mm-hmm. And um, say if I go to Australia, I can send it over there and tour Australia for four to five months. All you'll need to do is when you arrive, you arrive with a tire iron and uh, and then you're in business. Yeah, the basic yeah. toolkit and yeah. put the roll cage back on and away we go. I mm-hmm. mean, I'd love to do the classic Le Mans. Yeah. Um, and drive from, say, ship it over to England, meet up with a whole lot of people that I talked to up in England there and drive it through to the classic Le Mans and 
you know, do the south of France in it. I, I, I think that would be absolutely magic. Yeah. Good plan. That's a plan B for you. Oh, I, I try and have them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian. I, I believe, yeah, I, I believe you've got to, um, you've got to aim for something. Yeah. You know, if it's building a car, um, if it's a holiday, a cruise on a ship, You've got to have something looking, you've got to look forward to something and work towards something. Uh, otherwise, you're just existing. And there's so many people out there doing just that. Wow, wow. It's funny, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was having coffee with my my wife this morning, and that's exactly the conversation we were having is, got to have a plan, make each day meaningful, strive for something and have a goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, doing the black car, each week, I mean, you've seen my videos on YouTube. I've, mm -hmm. I've set out a plan to achieve something on it. Yeah. And um, I, I believe in, I believe we call it the Kaizen theory. Mm -hmm. Every little step is one step towards your end goal. Yeah. And even if it's just thinking about and planning what you're going to do mm -hmm. and moving forward on that, it's one little step towards achieving your ultimate goal. Wow. I got to say that um, you'll get there. It's um, awesome uh, for you to take the time and share it with us like that. And I got to say, those are two awesome looking chevrons. I, I knew nothing about chevrons. I, I still got a whole bunch to learn, but those are just beautiful looking cars. Okay. So I can, if you want, I can just give you a quick background on the make of car called Chevron. All right. So, uh, what it was in the early 80s, there was a company in Auckland here in Onehunga called Chevron Engineering. Mm -hmm. And the owner of that company, a guy by the name of Evan Frey, looked around at the racing scene and he wanted to build a cheap, lightweight little car that more people could enter into the racing scene with that they could build themselves. So he looked around and he saw that the Lotus 7 was really a really good example. Um, not that complicated, easy to build. It could put many different power units in, but, I mean, originally they were competitive with a very low-powered unit. Mm -hmm. And so he created the kit and started selling them. And, you know, they did all the fiberglass work, got the moulds done, and they, they actually took off. He, uh, from last, from memory, I think they got up to about 300 or so cars that they built. Hmm. Obviously, time marches on and Evan uh, retired and not so much of an emphasis on building the cars and they've basically stopped. But they were built to race on a budget. And so... Back in the day, you could build with the donor car roughly for about $15,000, and, and that was it. Wow. And obviously, there, there is a competitor here in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very well-made car called Fraser. Oh, I know so, about Fraser, yeah. Yep, yeah, they've got all the inboard suspension, and these cars, they are a work of art. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've got one end of the spectrum, and then you've got Chevron, which is at the other end of the the spectrum there's no animosity between the two because what you're doing is you're getting into this type of car mm -hmm. and you're enjoying yourself you're out there enjoying it we're all drinking water from the same well exactly yeah well brian i'm going to say thank you so much i'm going to uh, put us back into a panel where we can both see each other so I am going to say thank you so very much. You'll have to flip your phone around. Here we go. There we go. Brian, I'm going to give you my hat tip. Thank you so much for doing this with us today. This is um, just the beginning of many, I hope. And um, I'd like to keep in touch with you and follow and see what, what's going on. Uh, if we can from time to time, I think that would be just awesome. Oh, more, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, so my belief is basically more people need to get into these cars. Yeah. If you've ne if they've not tried them, they mm -hmm. need to try them. They need to get out there. The the freedom you get from these cars is 
absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I wish I could be more of an ambassador for them. I wish more people would get into them. Well, because then it's more people to play with. Let's build your channel, and um, you'll be a great ambassador. Oh, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. All right, Brian, I'm going to say thank you so much again. Cheers, yep. and we'll be in touch, and you work on that plan B. Okay, I now. will. Thank Bye you very now. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You bet. Bye.